guys, it's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to episode 107 of the TNA Impact Wrestling TW 2013 Let's Play. You join us for TNA Impact Wrestling as we are heading towards the Hardcore Justice pay-per-view off the back of Slammiversary. And just another show to continue some short-term storylines as we have a long build towards the next pay-per-view. This one is also booked within the Giant Centre in Hershey, Pennsylvania as we hope to again have a good rating and hopefully continue our basically our ascendancy up towards a, becoming a decent national company. So two pre-show segments, 16 segments to cover the two hour broadcast. Enjoy some TNA Impact Wrestling. So we end up with 11,933 people, not too bad. In a match that had some good action but not much in the way of heat, Bram defeated Brian Cage in 620 with the curb stomp. This was a 50 day rated match, we had to protect um, Brian Cage. Unfortunately, Bram was off his game, uh, both wrestlers did not click, which made it for an awkward bout. The commentary team did okay, no skill improvements, however, negatives are mostly for inconsistency and holding back as we continue the push of Bram. And in a match that had some good action and average heat, Matt Seidel and Morrison defeated Masata Yoshino and Mascara Dorado in 923 when Morrison defeated Masata Yoshino by pinfall with a roll up. This got 66 C plus and continued the X Division storyline. Morrison improved the technical skills and overall pretty decent match, although we hope they can do better as we continue that storyline between the X Division wrestlers. We start Impact with a match involving Chris Jericho and a match that had some good action and average heat. Chris Jericho defeated David Richards in 713 by pinfall with a line salt. This got a 68 C plus rating. Could have been better, but not too bad, and I guess Chris Jericho straight in to the TNA roster. After the match, Chris Jericho celebrates his win, then out of nowhere Adam Cole comes in and blindsides him. He puts him down before hitting him with the Florida Key. This is my future, my ring, not yours, he shouts to Chris Jericho. So it's a 79th B rated segment here, and it's just Adam Cole saying, you stole my spotlight, why are you here? This is my future, my ring, go away Jericho. And this continues the storyline between the two of them. No skill improvements. Both guys got poor gimmicks, which may, may look to amend down the line if this continues. Then we have Nakamura and Ibushi in the ring. Rocky Romero's music hits. So guys, I found my, my tag team partner, former multi-time world champion Rob Van Dam. This only got a 61C. The performance of Rocky Romero was good. The performance of Rob Van Dam was poor. No skill improvements and a lot of negatives for Rob Van Dam, which is understandable. The match itself and about the featured great action and a good crowd. State of Mind defeated Rocky Romero and Rob Van Dam in 11.48 when Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Rob Van Dam with a bomb a yee. State of Mind make defence number 5 of their TNA World Tag Team titles. 70C plus isn't great, but it's better than last week's match. Uh, the Tag Team Champions of the World storyline continues. No skill improvements. Uh, it's pretty much back to the drawing board for Rocky Romero as he looks for a tag team partner to take on State of Mind. Next we see John Cena arriving and he bumps in at EC3. Cena says, so I hear you're my opponent tonight. You've certainly came a long way, doing your auntie proud. EC3 replies back, John I respect you, like nearly everyone does in this business. But trust me, this isn't the same guy you know from up north. This is an evolution, a coming of age and I'll prove that tonight. Cena says, good luck kid. So obviously he knew him as Derek Bateman in WWE, so 82B, good segment between EC3 and Cena. And uh, obviously John Cena looked good in the segment, which is only limited for being short, but it was pretty decent with 82B. We then have a quick commercial with Steve Austin promoting the Stone Cold podcast with CM Punk. It's a cheap way to get a 74B- in there. Next up, I'm coming soon, Divine Entertainment, another promo vignette from Divine Entertainment. A 13F plus. Nothing fantastic at all, but hopefully over time we can get Johnny Devine over. And I managed to add some good action and average heat. Bobby Lashley defeated Jeff Hardy in 721. When Jeff Hardy was disqualified, when Matt Hardy ran in and attacked Bobby Lashley. This got a 60C, so okay, nothing great. The announce quality and the colour commentary gave the match a boost and the tag team storyline has advanced here. Jeff Hardy improves his performance skills. The plan is here to eventually have a tag match between the Hardys and the Nation. 
looks off. So Urnation wasn't there, but he'll get his revenge in the upcoming weeks. And Amash had some good action, but not much in the way of heat. Angelina Love and Melissa defeated Beth and Mia Yim in 718, when Angelina Love defeated Mia Yim with the lights out. During the match, we had Beth turn on Mia Yim. 62C, very good for the Divas. The women's storyline continues. Best improving a Rumble skill. She's going to be a dominant heel now because we have to take Melissa out of the title picture. Yeah, apart from that, I think both Angelina and, and Mia Yim done very well. But one segment, the quick turn, and it was a complete success. Delighted, excellent. So have a Glamazon as just a, a dominant heel. Next up in a match that featured great action and a good crowd, Ricochet defeated Joy Ryan in 10-16 with Chocolate Rain. Disappointing it was only a 69C+, but it continues the wins for Ricochet. No skill improvements, very limited uh, negatives, mostly for Joy Ryan, but with Joy Ryan being a paper per, per appearance contract, uh, we're we'll trying to get our own talents over, so that's why Ricochet gets the win. After Ricochet wins and heads to the back, we see him bumping into Piper. Lucky win tonight, son. Ricochet turns and goes to him, what do you want? Out of nowhere, Drew Galloway attacks Ricochet with left and right before slamming him into the ground. He finishes the assault off by throwing Ricochet into some lead pipes or metal pipes or just whatever backstage. Disappointing this only got a 61 seat, it's probably because of the lack of menace for Drew Galloway, so I'll maybe use a better custom angle than that. But the bank on its storyline has advanced. Negatives here are just for Piper and Galloway's momentum. But it continues a feud and hopefully they can have a good match when they eventually clash down the line. Then about the featured great action and a good crowd, CM Punk defeated Matt Taven in 713 with the GTS. AED. Very good written there. CM Punk improving performance skills. And even though Taven's really just been used as an enhancement talent, that's a, a very good matchup between these two. Next up, John Cena is walking backstage. He bumps into an old friend. CM Punk says, Hello, John. Fancy meeting you here. You just had to follow me here. Cena laughs, then says, Follow you? Not quite. I heard there was some good competition here. And a hell of a champion. Debatable in the champion, but hey, it's good here. Don't make me stay and kick your ass. Punk pulls a sarcastic face, as we all know CM Punk is, is known for. And John Cena walks away as Punk heads to the locker room. A great segment between these two and 88B. The performance of CM Punk was good. And the TNA World Championship storyline continues. No skill improvements. The dirt sheet just limited for being short. Don't need to book any match in or anything. And about the featured great action and a good crowd, Samoa Joe defeated Harry Smith in 12.40 by pinfall. Another win for the champion, a 71C+. Joe's improving his performance skills. Just a match really to keep him away from um, John Cena, to be honest. But decent, and hopefully we can continue to get better ratings with Samoa Joe, because he's going to be leading the company. In the main event, uh, could have been better. In a match that had some excellent in-ring action and great heat from the audience, EC3 defeated John Cena by four, in, in 14.20 with a headlock driver. Disappointing 74B, I was hoping this would hit the 80s, but hopefully it should elevate EC3. No skill improvements. Negatives are just for the stamina EC3 and gives me two faces. Uh, so maybe if it's face heel it would get better. But not the greatest written. Now we finish the show off, EC3 has left the ring, Cena is alone and struggling to his feet. Out of nowhere, Samoa Joe appears with Angelina Love in hot pursuit. Joe goes straight to Cena and starts to beat him down left and right. He continues the assault until he lands a muscle buster on Cena. He then taunts Cena and poses with the title. 89A in the World Championship storyline has advanced with this segment. I do feel maybe too many heels, just assaulting faces out of nowhere, but I believe it's the best way to get some feuds started and you know, hopefully then we can have some decent upper matches down the line. Segments were good, matches not so much, and I feel we've all lost pop because of this, but that's why we're using these kind of matches and segments, we're building people up, and hopefully we don't drop to cult and remain national, and more long term, we can really take the company forward. Uh, yep, so we lose pop in 17, we gain pop in 4, with a 77B, um, not to sell, put CM Punk back in the main event, but no, I won't. It's a lesson learned. I thought Cena and EC3 would draw, but it's one of those things. And yeah, we'll, we'll hope we can improve from there. 
So as long as it doesn't harm us in a way where we're actually sitting like in the brink of a uh, cult again, sorry, then I'm, I'm sure we'll be fine. And hopefully, no, hopefully no, we can build uh, folk up to ri rival CM Punk, because let's be honest, he's our only major star. So we're really looking at a couple of guys to kind of help Punk up there, which is why we brought Cena in, but hopefully no, some people can get elevated from that small run that Cena's in, and we can kick on. So we're just waiting on this, we are sitting at a random profile, which is Diachi Kakimoto. Let's see what we've got then. So TNA Crossfire, the vast majority liked it, Impact. It was a pretty good show, my still wasn't pop because of that good show, so... Shows me the standard is really high. I um, don't know if there's anything there that really stands out. We could maybe poach somebody. No, nobody really. Oh, you see freeze out and moan to WWE or the sim. Yep, that's cool, that's cool. Um, we're going to check the size. Our prestige is down from 100 to 94, so I don't know what that means. Size, mm, not great, not great. Uh, but what I will do is I might start turning on owner goals. Um, so we can start to get to the stage where we can maybe get this rating up a bit from Abysmal, but we'll see what Dexy puts up over the next week before the next crossfire, and um, hopefully it can improve. Emails, obviously, you see for easily to NXT, Al Snow's contract, Joy Ryan's growing schedule, down to 094 on Bravo, and an 8.38 on Spike. So we'll look to improve then, but overall, an average show, and hopefully soon we'll have some wrestlers that can deal with main event pressure. But that's it guys, thank you for tuning in, hope you enjoyed the episode. If you've got any comments, please leave them in the comments section. If you did like the episode, please leave a like. And until next time, this is Twitter on Maxwell, we'll speak to you all real soon. Bye bye.